If you watch this show regularly, we, you know that we love to try various drinks and cocktails. Well, if you've ever wondered where some of the liquors originated from, we've got a little lesson for you today. The Arizona State Museum at the U of A participated in writing a chapter in the new book, New the Lives for Ancient Ex Extinct Plants, that examines the history of the ancient plants and their uses today. Their chapter covers agave, which is used to make tequila. So here to tell us more is Paul R. Fisher and Suzanne K. Fish. Hello. Good morning. Hi. How are you guys? We are good and glad to be here. Oh, we're so happy you're here. So tell us a little bit about your book. Okay, the book is by nine different archaeologists, and each one tells the story of a plant that was used by farmers in the past in the in ancient times, but isn't used anymore. And the idea is to learn what we can use those crops for today as well. And so you both co-authored chapter four. Which That's happens right. to be the agave plant. That's right, and it's about uh, agaves that were used as a crop by the ancestors of Native Americans in the Tucson area. Oh, that's awesome. So does agave have any other different uses that we don't know about? <laughs> well, it certainly does. Go uh, ahead. It has a multitude of uses. Uh, uh, among them is food. Uh, uh, the agave hearts were baked and consumed widely in this region, and a uh, host of fiber products, uh, such as the ones here, uh, uh, were uh, manufactured uh, from the fibers in the leaves. Uh, tools such as these were used uh, to remove the outer surface of the leaves and expose fibers uh, like this, which could be woven into a, a, just a variety of articles that range in fineness, uh, uh, cloth-like fineness to more coarse uh, items. So people were actually making shoes out of agave. Uh, they were. Oh, and Maybe. what is this guy? Uh, a little everyday brush. These are examples from modern Mexico. Uh, uh, you can buy articles like these on the streets and are used uh, extensively today. So this is an agave plant. That is an agave plant. That's so we a young go one. From this to this. <laughs> okay. The agave plant grows up. It becomes much larger. Okay. Depending on the species. And the whole time it is living, it's storing carbohydrates in the base. And uh, people harvest it just before it puts up that big stalk at the end of its life. And then they use the carbohydrates instead of the plant. Mm -hmm. So if you bake the base of the plant, all those carbohydrates turn to sugars. Oh. So you end up with a sweet, sugary mass. And the tequila bottle shows what you get if uh, that mass is fermented mm -hmm. and, and then uh, made into an alcoholic drink. Uh, tequila, mezcal, pulque are all alcoholic drinks. And here we have a new product as well, which is the agave uh, sugar or agave syrup which is used as a sweetener. Okay. So it's a plant that yields lots of calories, lots of sugary uh, products. So would you say that this would mm -hmm. kind of be honey's comparison, like a honey competitor, the agave? It would. Or? And uh, you know, it's, it's an orga organic product that appeals to many people these days uh, and is really becoming very common on the market. And I was just gonna say, this is like relatively new. I mean, I haven't mm -hmm. heard a lot of you know, baked goods and things using agave, but I feel the more guests that we have on the yeah. show and the more places, the more restaurants you go, you're yes. starting to see agave a lot more. That's right, but it, the traditional uses are still there if you go south of the border. Uh, if you go to, say, Wymus, mm -hmm. uh, you can see people still buying chunks of baked agave on the street to eat as a sweet because oh. it, they like the flavor and they like the, the sugariness of it. Baked agave, How do you, what do you do with that? Because isn't it a sugar? Uh, well, the, the heart of the plant that holds all the carbohydrates that turn to sugar have to be baked for a long time to get that conversion oh. to the, the okay. sugary product. So uh, traditionally, they were baked in a pit for up to two days. Oh, wow. Well, and then I yeah. did have a question for you about, mm -hmm. I mean, how old is this plant? When is the perfect prime time to pick the plant to make the alcohol, to make the agave nectar? Well, if you have an agave in you, your yard, you know that it takes a long time to flower. And yeah. you have to wait till it's maturity to harvest it. So it could be from 5 to 25 years that farmers wait to get this 
harvested. They wait 25 years and then they cut the plant down and then let it cook for two hours. And That's then, right. It's an wow. involved process. <laughs> for sure is an involved process. Yeah. Now, why were you two chosen to, wrote, to write Chapter 4? Tell us about that experience. Uh, for years, we've worked on uh, demonstrating that agave was a cultivated plant on a large scale here in pre-Hispanic times. And uh, we've been able to identify specialized fields that were covered the basin slopes. It's a wonderful plant that's adapted to very dry conditions. So where they couldn't irrigate and uh, grow uh, uh, traditional crops of corn, beans, and squash, uh, they could plant agave and uh, get very high yields. Awesome. And where can people buy the book? <laughs> Uh, uh, they can buy it from the University of Arizona mm -hmm. Press. Just Google uh, the U of A Press and you can order it from them. Great. Excellent. You're hearing it from the agave gurus. <laughs> Thank you both for joining us. This was very educational and interesting. I had no idea that you could make even products out of it. Oh, yes. And without a doubt, fun. We're always learning. A long history of it. Yes, yes absolutely. Thank you both Thanks so much for, for joining us. us. Thank you. And the Arizona State Museum is on University Boulevard. To learn more about their exhibits, you can call 621-6302 or go online to statemuseum.arizona.edu. Again, that number is 621 6302 and statemuseum.arizona.edu. And still ahead on the morning blend, we'll meet an inspiring couple opening their home to some kids in need. Plus, we'll find out why one author was inspired to write about a crocodile who loves to doodle. That's right after the break.